For me, it's how physically he resembled <laughs> Kit, uh, which was, which was um, a little weird at times, but in the best possible way. Uh, you know, there's certain angles of Ben where I looked at him and it was like I saw Kit in in him, and then also in his performance and in, in his mannerisms and. Um, his approach to to certain lines and um, just an overall essence. Like he he was very and is in many ways very kit like. Yeah, it's funny. I never met Kit in person. It's because he, he seen... didn't like he wasn't a fan. Because he wasn't a fan. <laughs> I kept you guys apart as far as possible. <laughs> well, whatever the cruel reason, I never met Kit as as in real life. But picture wise and your very vivid descriptions in the book about what he's like, there was, everybody could see the overlap. And like, I think that Ben and Kit have more in common on the superficial level that we were talking about in some ways. And, and I guess related to that for me, there was so much kindness and charisma in what he did. It was, it felt easy to, to join forces with him. Jim and I knew each other, have known each other for a while. Professionally, um, I've been you know, interviewing him on red carpets and sometimes he'd come into the studio and I'd do interviews with him. And instantly we, we had a, a, a rapport. Um, and I think that's because we have a shared sensibility uh, in terms of not taking anything too seriously. Uh, and I think that's what, what I connected with Jim about was he was, it was just fun to be around him. There was no pretense. There was, uh, it was, he was, he was playful, but he was also snarky. Um, and uh, it was just immediately there was an ease between the two of us. The first time I saw Jim playing me, it, it was surreal. It, you know, it was like, I can't believe this is happening. I'm sitting here looking into a monitor watching Jim Parsons, you know, play the story of my life. Um, it, it was, uh, honestly, I felt just a gratitude. I felt like I, I'm so grateful to have gotten to this point and to be able to share this story with um, so many more people. Um, and to have someone like Jim starring in it, it just was like, it, it, it was um, an embarrassment of riches. That's very sweet to say. I'm realizing I've never allowed myself to fully imagine what it would be like to be doing what he did. I think that I, I think that's one of those, there's a few little things like this that I think I made sure to stop myself from doing for fear that it would somehow affect or inhibit what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like trying to put myself in Michael's shoes. I mean, I was trying to put myself in Michael's shoes for a major chunk of his life he had written down. Um, I don't think I could have, and I'm still realizing I haven't yet really thought about what it's like to put myself in his shoes for going through this experience. Um, and as I'm thinking about it, I understand why. It's enormous, it's enormous watching your life reflected back at you. Movie Michael has, there's a maybe more of an outward sort of sweetness and vulnerability to him. Uh, I think I, I, I'm more of like, I think in a protective shell a lot. Uh, so I don't let people see, you know, you know, vulnerability, um, even like sweetness, uh, anger, any kind of, like I'm, I'm very controlled with my emotions. Movie Michael, I think, doesn't have maybe as many hangups in the department. 
Yeah. Is that fair? I think that's very fair. I think that's a combination of me being me as a, an actor, but also the movie we put together, I guess, called for that. And this was like in my mind, I never was like whoever plays me, it has to be an imitation. Like especially right. when we got Jim, I think one of the exciting things was I couldn't wait to see what he brought to this role that surprised me and that was interesting. Um, and and I knew that this he would create his own Michael, and he did. It was emotional uh, at times, but not because. I felt like I was being taken back to painful parts of my life and now it's being relived in front of me. Um, it was because the work being done was just so good. I was just so in the moment and enjoying these performances and um, and just as a, as a viewer, as a, someone who was just watching this experience unfold before me, I was moved by it. And sometimes, you know, there was, difficult scenes being shot and I was moved by those but it wasn't never like oh this is really tough going back here right? Right. it wasn't like we were shooting a documentary um, but it was watching like th these incredible artists um, play out these scenes and some of them were emotionally wrenching to watch in addition to being a really nice guy Jim is also incredibly smart and he surrounds himself with really smart people so when That's Wonderful Productions approached me about uh, potentially optioning the book, in many ways it was just a, a no-brainer because I f felt like, you know, a story this personal, it, it needed to be in the hands of people I trust and, uh, and respect. And I think that speaks to Jim and his company. A couple months after Kit died, I was actually approached from an editor at Simon & Schuster who had followed some of the story uh, on social media. Kit and I had been sharing, um, documenting um, the cancer journey on Facebook amongst a close-knit group of friends. And one of them was uh, an acquaintance at Simon & Schuster who had been following it. And a couple months after Kit died, he approached me and he said, would you ever give any thought to turning this into a book? Because he was really moved by the story. Um, and I hadn't really given much thought <laughs> to it because uh, I, you know, I was still grieving. It was just a couple months after his death. But um, it got me thinking, uh, about you know what an extraordinary opportunity it would be to introduce uh, Kit to you know thousands, potentially millions of people, and let them uh, get to know him. I haven't still fully grasped the fact that Sally Field is a part of this movie. Um, I mean, she's a legend, an icon, and I grew up on her movies and I was a Big Brothers and Sisters fan, and it's just an incredible honor that she's part of this project. Spoiler alert, The Hero Dies um, basically tells the story of my 13 and a half year relationship with my late husband, Kit, and uh, with a focus on the last year of his life, his cancer diagnosis through to his death. Um, so the, it's really concentrated on those 11 months, but we go back uh, through the book to you know, sort of glimpses and flashbacks to our relationship uh, together. The good times, the bad times, you know, the really messy times. Well, one of the most important things when we started talking about turning the book into a movie was it had to be shot in New York. You know, Kit and I fell in love in New York. Our relationship was took place entirely in New York. We got married in New York. New York is and this is cheesy and cliche to say, but another character in this story. So it would have broken my heart if we had to shoot somewhere else. As I watch it, I'm like, Jim is, you know, bringing things to my life and this story that I couldn't have even imagined possible and illuminating character in new and exciting ways. And at times <laughs> making me maybe more interesting than I actually am. Seeing Ben Aldridge play Kit is super surreal at times because he actually looks like Kit, especially at certain angles. Um, you know, when the light hits him or his head is turned a certain way, uh, you know, I get chills sometimes thinking, oh my God, he looks so much like Kit. And he's also a fantastic actor and he's incredibly handsome. And I 
have to think Kit would have appreciated that. The great thing about Michael Showalter is he is a master at mixing tones, um, particularly drama and comedy. We saw that with The Big Sick, especially, uh, where he took, you know, sort of this essentially sad um, story about illness, but mixed in layers of comedy uh, and, and, and just made it so that it wasn't just a downer, that it, you know, it was both heartfelt, moving, but also hilarious. And he just was the perfect person for this kind of story. At the beginning of the film, I think Kit um, is, is kind of that, that mid-twenties, kind of not quite, kind of knowing what you want to do, but not quite there yet. He's got a, a day job, which is like a bit creative, but working for Kosi, doing their signage. He isn't making a living from his art, which like so many artists don't get an opportunity to do. So I think he's got a little bit of like awkwardness and embarrassment about that. Um, and in terms of like relationships, I think he's like out on the town, he's on the apps. He hasn't had a significant relationship up to that point. He's having a, probably a lot of fun, casual sex. Um, and and yeah, meeting meet, meeting Michael is kind of uh, a real shift for him in his life, I think. Um, but he's kind of just like doing what most people are doing in their twenties. I think is kind of finding out who they who they are and all of that. When they first get the cancer diagnosis, they're actually on a break. They've they've hit this point in their relationship where they're seeing a couples counselor, a couples therapist, and it's not quite working um, in the way that they wanted to. So they're kind of in this moment of considering what they want to be and they're spending time living apart. And I think what the diagnosis does is bring them back together um, in a very intense way because they realize that they love each other, but that they need each other and, and the kit needs Michael th through that time. Um, and I think it deepens their love. I think... Um, I can only imagine that uh, helping someone through that, supporting them through that, um, and seeing someone at their most vulnerable would deepen that connection. And they're really tested by it, I think. It was a really interesting one for me, forming, like forming Kit, my version of Kit. I, um, once we finally knew that I could do it, I was sent um, via Michael Osiello a bunch of home video footage and also Kit's memorial uh, uh, video from his um, funeral. And that's when I kind of really encountered my le the level of responsibility I felt in portraying him and telling his story. And it, initially, that was quite overwhelming. I was like, it was very emotional. I felt very emotional to be seeing him and to kind of thinking that in some ways I was stepping into his into his shoes and I I, uh, I was a little intimidated I think that in, in wanting to get that right for him for Michael and and for Kit and um, through discussions with with Showalter and Jim they, they were really interested in me finding my own version of Kit and that I he was quite an idiosyncratic energy <clears throat> really interesting guy and kind of um, yeah quite kind of particular mannerisms and quite particular voice and that they felt that they really didn't want me to kind of concentrate on doing an impression of him in any way, but to kind of distill down his essence into into me and to and to, for it to kind of be very truthful. I think I think had I gone down the the other route, I would have been doing lots of acting <laughs> in in a in a film that they wanted to keep very truthful. I think they developed this relationship just as we all do, that they find real common ground and real safety in being understood and being seen by someone else. And I think they are a little eccentric um, and a little, I hate this word, quirky, but they're a little, yeah. Um, and I think they have this real shared sense of humour and naughtiness and cheekiness. Um, and I think they kind of show each other in their own ways how to relax a little more. I think they're both slightly tightly tightly wound on different subjects, but I think they help each other in that way. Um, I think they're both quite neurotic, but about different things. And they kind of like relax each other, I would say, and make a good team. It's a love story. It's about two guys meeting 
uh, in the early noughts, as you guys call it. We call it the noughties in the UK, which I think is cheekier and sexier, but in the, in the aughts, do you guys like aughts or the noughts? One of those. Um, and it really is just uh, chronic chron chronicling their relationship, um, them getting to know each other, the you know, the things that any relationship goes through in terms of being being tested and finding out how you fit together and uh, those awkward moments, and those moments of growth. And then um, then Kit is diagnosed with cancer and that obviously has a huge impact on their relationship. I think Michael Showalter is like the perfect person to direct this because uh, it fits with his body of work already. But also he... Uh, we, if we, if Jim and I were like so emotional <laughs> all the time <laughs> on set, Michael is uh, not sentimental and he has his eyes on the prize on making a good film and it not being indulgent. And um, I think he was the perfect balance in his kind of energy and his and his brightness. Not that we were ever, you know, we were always having fun. We weren't there depressed, but they, it was just he was just such a uh, perfect compliment, I think, to... Um, to what Jim and I were bringing and also the perfect person to steer to steer the film and he's such a collaborator as well I, I, I've i never worked so collaboratively in terms of him really wanting your input as an actor like so often you will hear you will hear someone kind of pretend that they want to know how an actor is feeling about it or how the lines are feeling and Michael really does want to know it's genuine like I think a lot of the time people don't really want to hear how actors what actors are thinking they're a bit like just say it just do, do what's on the page but this truly was kind of like making sure we all felt connected to it that we were all saying the right thing I just felt so lucky to be working with Jim and Jim cares for this film and the script and this story so much and it has such passion for for it for for uh, telling the story authentically and for playing Michael authentically and also just a real desire to connect to it in a way that we understood it as actors. I've never felt anyone believe in me as much as I felt Jim believed in me. Sebastian is a, a co-worker of Kit's um, at uh, the, the, the furniture place that he works at, the showroom. And um, I think there is a, like a natural chemistry between them, a, an attraction, and uh, he becomes like a focal point of uh, Michael's kind of paranoia that maybe there is something happening between them. But I think also kind of um, <clears throat> highlights some of Michael's insecurity around around Kit and around them being a good match in, in that in that way. And and yeah, he, you know, he creates an inter interesting tension for them to navigate. I think it is an important LGBTQ plus story. I, I don't know. I think all uh, LGBTQ plus stories are important um, for us at the moment. I think like, I personally think representation has the power to change the world. Um, you know, m now more than ever, we are consumers of TV and film. That's, you know, we learned that so much during the pandemic. Um, and there is so much being made. And I think that uh, either watching about a story that you don't know about, can, well, that can make you more compassionate and give you more understanding and uh, give you an insight into someone's life that you wouldn't otherwise have had. And I think also it gives a, a community of people a chance to learn about themselves as well and see yourself reflected back. And I think that's really important to, I think we're all on a quest in life to be, to feel like we belong somewhere and to be understood and to be seen. And I think that um, representation in, in film and TV has that, the power to do that. Major themes of the film, um, the major theme is just love for me. That's the that's the takeaway. Um, I think this film will inspire people to love better. That's what I wrote to Michael Osiello after I read the book. And I think um, luckily that translates to the film as well. Perhaps Bob has not taken the time or made the leap to ask Kit about himself. So there's a wonderful scene in front of Kirby, the roommate, where uh, Ben, Kit, come out to, to his parents. And the coming out uh, for young men uh, is, is a huge, or not, uh, chapter, threshold in life. But the wonderful way that uh, Showalter handled it was that it was a surprise, lots of revelation, and then, well, good, that's over. Nice to meet you, Michael. So now, you're my son's boyfriend. Okay. 
Sally Field is a funny storyteller. Even between you and me, even when she tries not to be. You know, she's just has a funny take on life. And it is a thrill to sit next to her. I don't need to see her face. I know that, oh, I know what she's doing right now. I know I'm, I'm going to get an ad lib in. And she turns and she says something to me, wife to husband. It just feels like it's part of the story uh, texture. So when I met him, I was not surprised that he's a beautiful Chekhovian actor. I wasn't surprised, but I did kind of have to register, wow, he's like a triple, he's like a football player who can kick, throw, run, and catch, you know, uh, and block. And uh, so watching Jim Parsons' genius from that point of view, from a fellow actor's point of view, is really a rich gift. It's a story about people's daily lives hit with big, big events. Cancer diagnosis, uh, breakup, marriage, realizing the person I'm in love with is somebody I can't live with right now, realizing I have to live with the person I love because uh, we have so little time left. Big, big realizations in a sort of normal day-to-day -day life. It's important to tell LGBTQ plus stories because they've been denied. I mean, I like to think that in my son's lifetime, it'll be so much a part of the normal fabric of life that the stories need to be told, but they don't need to be told maybe with the urgency that they do right today because they've been denied for most of my life. Somebody was born in the middle of the previous century. The stories of a huge number of my neighbors, friends, fellow citizens has been denied. So important to tell them now.